Welcome to God with George Ortega. This is episode number 83. I'm recording it on Wednesday, February 17th at 5.59 p.m. Eastern time. And um, I was just in um, conversing with someone and, um, and I, 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 you know, I'm not really um, sure what God wants me to talk about. Um, let's see. Let's 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 talk about yeah. Um, because part of what I was talking about uh, with, during this conversation before this was um, was this idea of free will, and um, apparently God wants me. Because think about it. Uh, whatever I decided to talk about God, you know, um, whatever I decided to say, these ideas would be coming into my mind, like what I'm saying right now, what you're thinking right now about what I'm saying right now, about whatever else you might be thinking about. These thoughts are just coming into our head, you know? And, and you know, I mean, like, honestly, we don't know where in a, in a sense a lot you know but no no but but logic tells us that they're, they're just not coming from 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 nowhere right and and sure we, we understand they're coming from our brain our mind but then what 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 is responsible for that so basically the idea is like when we think about it again because god created the world because god is all powerful and because one of god's laws was this causal law law of cause and effect then obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm expressing God's will. Um, and I guess, you know, so like I'm, I'm trying to figure out why it's difficult for people to, to understand that or accept that. I think, I think I, I you know, the um, one reason is like when you, when you choose to believe or understand that, that we don't have a free will, you know, like our, our four top scientists, you know, Newton, Darwin, Freud, and, and Einstein. If, if, you, if you accept this, it creates what to some is a challenging implication. And that is that, well, if, if what we do and think and say and feel is not up to us and it's up to God, then we have to blame God for all the bad things we do. You know, and, and most people would prefer to blame ourselves and each other, but I prefer to blame God. And 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 various reasons. One, it makes sense. For example, like we we kind of understand that when we do something good, and, and you hear athletes talk about this a lot, you know, famous, you know, award-winning athletes, athletes, you know, when they, when they win something. They thank God. They, they, they understand that their talent, their skills are a gift from God. So, so my point is that like we're comfortable thanking God for allowing us to do good things. And it just makes sense to, to then blame God when we don't. And, 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 and this is, so it, it's logical, it's, but it's more than logical. Um, God you know, my vision, my, you know, my conception of God is God is everything. I mean, you know, two, two to three trillion galaxies, each with two to 300 billion stars. God is so, so awesome, you know, and like, so, so yes, if I blame God um, for these things, I don't think God is, is going to mind. I think, you know, I, you know, I would hope he, God understands. And, and I'm trying to refer to God as a she because like, you know, I think it's, it's time we start doing that. But, um, but see, like when, when, I, when I don't, when I, if I were to blame people and people blame me, that's, that's why there's so much lack of peace and civility and then distrust and fear in the world because everybody's blaming themselves and each other for things that are not in our control in any sense. And so, yeah, if we would shift this perspective of, of, of why we do what we do to because, well, because we have this free will and it's us and all to, to God, then, then it, would, 
it would help us um, to, um, to to feel more innocent. I mean, we, we still, you know, we still have to do what's right because according to how this world works, when we do good, we get rewarded. When we do bad, we get punished. You know, you can't avoid that. So you know, it's not like, you know, oh, I don't have a free will, so I can do anything I want. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But, but you know, you know, get to, to understand that we have a free will just lifts a, a heavy burden from us. And, and also, you know, when, when we ascribe our thoughts to ourselves, that, that fills us with arrogance sometimes, with, uh, with, you know, unhealthy pride, conceit, you know, how great am I that I did or, or said or, you know, thought this. And that, you know, that kind of arrogance, that's a wall. That's a wall that, that we build between ourselves and other people. It's like, you know, whereas like when, when we, um, when I tribute, um, you know, um, the greatness to God, you know, I, um, I end up feeling grateful, you know, that God has, has made me do this good thing, you know, um, and, and I, yeah. So, um, all right, so let's see. Um, so yeah, so um, now, all right, what time? I'm feeling a little tired. <laughs> what time? 6.05, okay. Um, that's right, I got 21 minutes left and let's see. What else about God? Um, well, all right. I, I, again, God takes time sometimes. He, we, she wasn't feeding me a, a quick answer. A lot of times she will feed me a very quick answer. I go flow from idea to idea. And sometimes, like right now, you know, she's making me uh, work for it, I guess. I don't know. But, um, but now God has me thinking that... Um, to talk about what this experience of, of talking about God five days a week for 28 minutes each is 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 um, is creating me. It's like it's a very powerful practice. I, I I have I've spoken to God for decades. Um, you just like some people, you know. Like if you ever saw the Fiddler on the Roof, the film, Tubya. Um, you know the the fiddler he uh, or the, no his I don't know what he did um but anyway the, the main character he just he's walking around you know um and talking to God all the time and that that I I think that's like powerful and healthy and wonderful so but but it's one thing to do that um, occasionally you know just like you know God's like a, always a friend or whatever and it's another thing to to devote again twenty eight minutes to God five days a week. And, and, and that's the thing, the, my, my challenge is to not tangent because it's so easy to tangent to, to, to other, um, other topics. But, um, but it really is, it really is, I'm, I'm feeling it really helpful in my life. Um, things are going, better much better and it's not just god it's it's the kind of people that god has been putting in my life that um that inspire motivate my, my best um and uh so both directly and indirectly you know just this process of thinking about god and uh and i guess i'm not even communicating with god because in these shows I, I don't really talk to god i'm talking to you you know, or myself, I guess nobody's watching, whatever. But um, but you know, there's there's something to that. And then um and yet for some reason today I um I'm a little tired. I'm gonna take a nap later, man. Um this it's just like it's see we sometimes we know things, um, but the utility in knowing them to a great extent depends on our knowing them well enough to integrate them into our general life. Um, for example, I know that God loves me. I know God is always trying to help me. I go, I know that, you know, I can feel God's presence, you know, and I can, I, I can 
sense when God is leading me, you know, to do what's right, you know, when I don't know what to do, you know, and, I, and um, but, um, but so often throughout the day, I, I, I get caught up in these activities that I, um, I guess I lose touch with, with God's presence. And that's actually an advantage of, of Orthodox Judaism, and I, I'm certainly other religions um, or sects that that you know that have let's say a lot of rituals, a lot of laws. Because if if you spend your day, you know, making sure you you, you pray three times a day and and say blessings over meals and blessings when you walk through door portals and and uh, you know so many different kinds of blessings that that one has to say during the day. Again, this is mainly. Um, Orthodoxy, Jewish Orthodoxy, but also conservative Jews and all. We we tend to um, you know to to have these these ritual practices uh, daily. That that certainly does connect us, have us, you know, and and that's I think a major major benefit of, of them. That's that's why they're so effective to to keep us connected with God. But this 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 series is really um, you know is really changing again. Eighty three. Episodes. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how, what it'll feel like at, at 160, God willing. You know, um, incidentally, I spoke with my friend Andy and said, yeah, we're going to try to do more series, but like he just can't bring up this, this, this idea of, of Messiah. Or I'm, I'm actually, I got to think about it because, like, I may propose to him, listen, if you want, if you want to bring up the Messiah, we can debate the Messiah, and that way we'll go scripture to scripture to scripture, you know, saying, well, I believe Jesus is the Messiah. And like, and you know, if, if you if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, my intention is not to convert people to believe or not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. This, this show is about God, you know, um, it doesn't really, it's really not about who is the Messiah, but the, the, the Messiah, kind of um, topic is important because, you know, one of the, one of the Ten Commandments um, says, well, you know, you shouldn't make any idols. And basically from that, you, you, you kind of like reach the understanding that we can't idolize our, ourselves or each other either. You know, in other words, like we human beings, according to, um, again, these laws, the Ten Commandments, uh, we, we can't be God. So uh, anyway, that, that may be a semantic um, distinction with some, but but um all right anyway so like so you know that that may be coming up now i'm just like you know talking about whatever um let's get on to another uh, oh i actually have my list I, I made this list that i typed up so now when i'm a, at a loss okay coveting uh this is so yes because like you know there are Ten Commandments, thou shall not covet. Most, most of us don't even know what that means. What do you mean, huh? <laughs> All right, so thou shall not want, I guess, what's not ours, right? You know, um, what belongs to someone else. And that makes a lot of sense, of course. I mean, like, because to the extent that we want what others have, that leads us to, um, to think and, and, and sometimes do things that are just not right, that, that are not virtuous. Um, but it's, it's interesting now, some people don't believe that the, the Ten Commandments have any special distinction. You know, again, within Judaism, there's 613, according to Maimonides, I think. Um, but again, that's just like, a, you know, it could have easily been like 1,500 or whatever. Um, but um, but this, this, you know, the, the fact that, that Coveney made it into the top 10, I, I believe, you know, you know they're they're special they're 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 more important than the other you know the rest of the 613 or whatever because they made it into the top 10 <laughs> and um and so yeah what's interesting is like you know i i was raised episcopalian and like you know sure we heard about the, the 10 commandments and all but like you know I, I don't remember hearing any sermons about coveting i mean like maybe i wasn't listening i was a kid back then whatever but um but it, it, it's just, it's something that, that we, we don't talk about, we don't think about, and, and it's unfortunate because there is great wisdom 
in that commandment. You know, God is telling us, listen, I give different things to different people, you know, and what I give to other people isn't necessarily the same as what I, what I give to you, but I give to everyone what they need at the time. And so like, no one should feel that in order to feel happy or, 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 or enjoy life, they have to have what someone else has, you know? Because the, the idea is like, you know, it's a deep idea is that, it's that, um, that God at every moment um, provides us with, with everything we need. And yes, that might be difficult to, to accept at times of, of great suffering you know, illness and all. It doesn't sound completely, uh, you know, generalized or, or universal. But, but you know, that does tend to be um, the way things work. Um, so coveting. So yeah, I mean, that, all right. So like, um, what else? <laughs> um, hold on. Uh, lying, oh, lying, yes, let's talk about lying. This is um, because, you know, bearing false witness. Um, most people, and, and so, see, I, this is supposed to be about God. And so now I was about to launch into a sermon on, on how we, for example, maybe would benefit from truth detection technology, how, you know, lies are so harmful to the world. But how can I connect this more with God? Let's look, and this is something I, I'm not sure I've ever thought that much about. You know, God has a truth. There's a, there's a reality that, that's, that's true and accurate, and we rely on that, you know, to conduct business, to conduct personal business. You know, um, truth is a powerful tool, uh, a powerful gift. That, that, that keeps our, our communities, our, 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 our societies together. And to the extent um, truth is violated, you know, then, then fear ensues, you know, so, um, or, or loss and, 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 and um, you know, cause people, you know, people lie, then people are discovered to have been lying. And then there's, 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 um, there's conflict that, that emerges and develops and, uh, yeah, lying, um, it's interesting. Once I, I saw this film, I think it's about, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like, this is it's not science fiction, I guess. So like, it's a world where like nobody lies and then <laughs> one person <laughs> figures out that he can say something to someone that's not true and that person will just believe them because there's no lies before that. And, and it was a pretty interesting movie because the, the concept is so, um, so unique, so uh, surreal in a way. So, um, but all right, so let's, let's more closely try to connect this, this idea of lying with God. Why, um, well, I mean, you know, a lot of these, what God commands us, God's laws, I mean, we, we understand them as common sense. We understand that it doesn't feel good to be lied to. And, and uh, you know, naturally there's white lies. You know, it's like if I write a song and I, and I um, sing it to someone, they don't like it all that much. And then they might say, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and which is fine. We, we, we lie, you know, to, to, to save others, you know, unpleasant feelings or whatever. And, and that's, you know, that, that's the way it should be. It seems. Until, I mean, there, there's probably actually, no, no, now we're, now we're breaking the ground. There's, we do have these white lies. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of them. And a lot of them, for, you know, they're, 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 um, they're, they're kind of like indispensable to, to today's society. And I'm trying to figure out how to connect this with God. But, um, well, let me just finish this and, and uh, we'll try that. And the idea is that like a lot of these lies that we tell and again, well, that God is making us tell. Don't, don't forget that God is controlling everything. So it's not like we're choosing of a free will to lie. Very important. You know, it's bad enough we lie and God punishes us. But, but to, to then, you know, add to that <laughs> double indemnity, blaming us for that. But, but anyway, so like God, um, yeah, these white lies, you know, eventually, I mean, we, we lie these white lies because we don't know how to kindly say the truth. 
you know, and that that explains it. That that is the or or, or, or you know, for example, I think I I, t I, t I told a white lie recently. And I'll, I'll, it, it, I'm not sure if it was a white lie or not, or a lie, but basically, I um I have this um this meetup group that that meets on on Fridays, you know. And and I think the second group, you know, is a brand new group. Um, uh, no, meets on yeah Fridays. So like I just it slipped my mind, and it's, it was supposed to start at seven and eight o'clock. And then oh my god, I, I didn't open up the room. And this is a you know Zoom room, and there there must have been like 15, 20 RSVPs to this. So I sent out a, a text, uh, a message to the member saying, listen, I'm, I'm really sorry, something came up. That 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 I wasn't able to be there on time. Now the you know that's true. You know what came up is that I forgot about it. But it is a kind of white white lie, right? And, and I did it, you know, because like if I would have said, well, you know, I'm sorry, I just forgot about it. The group members there might have felt slighted, might have felt that you know that I just um, wasn't considering the group important enough, which wasn't the the, the truth. I mean, I, I, I this group is awesome. You know, it's you know. Um, but um, but yeah, I think the point I'm trying to make is that we lie when we don't know well enough how to tell the truth in a way that's, that's helpful rather than hurtful. And I think if we go back a decade, you know, um, decades ago, probably people told a lot more white lies. We're probably getting better as, as, a, as a human race, human species, at um, not having to resort to, to lies. Um, because we can, we've gotten better at communicating. We can, we've gotten better at saying things like, there's an expression, and I really have to return this to God you know, after this, because there's an expression that um, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And that, that couldn't ring more true. You know, if, if you say what you're saying in the right way, you can pretty much say anything. You know, um, um, all right, so so we've gone covenant, lying. Um, is that the idol idol worship? I mean, that's uh, not having. Well, that's you know, that to me isn't all that interesting because, like you know, they were dealing struggling with 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 idols, you know, two three thousand years ago. Right now, actually, now and I take that back. You know, God doesn't want us worshiping anything other than God. But who among us don't worship? money and success and prestige and fame and all this stuff these are these are idolatrous kinds of um experiences to the extent that we we you know that they supersede um more virtuous aspects of our lives or our reality you know if we're if we're serving you know money or power or fame rather than God, that is idolatry. You know, we're supposed to be living to, to understand God and to fulfill God's commandments for our benefit. God doesn't need us, you know, to do this for, for herself. Um, and to the extent that we, you know, for example, so a lot of people, you know, they become very rich and, um, well, no, no, some, I mean, it, it's not that I'm saying that, that, that making a lot of money is, is, is immoral. It's just that sometimes, uh, whether it's, it's making money or fame or gaining power, it's like sometimes we just, you know, make and have so much more than we need, and we don't realize that um, our lives would be much better if we didn't seek as much fame, power, or money, whatever it is. Um, all right, for some reason, I'm, I'm kind of like today, you know, somewhat philosophical. I'm not, I want to get, it's been, you know, it's been a little more difficult to staying connected with God. Um, but, you know, having said that, you know, which is kind of ironic, because really, um, these last few days, uh, I've just been feeling God's presence so strongly. And, and God has been influencing me to, to be, um, to be humble, to be honest, to be good, you know? And I mean, I, I tend to be humble and, and honest and good 
anyhow, but this is kind of like, you know, scaling it up a bit, which is nice. And um, so, yeah, that's good. So I, I guess, yes, this, this episode is about promoting the, um, the benefits of this practice. Um, everybody should have a, a God TV show. I will um, I'll franchise the, you know, the, the name. It's God in all capital letters. Actually, I want to talk about that. Like the reason I, I you know, this is called God in all caps is like, I'm thinking that maybe like in order to grant God the distinction that she deserves, we should, whenever we write the word God, write it in all caps. Because that would mean that like every other word that we have is written, you know, either either in, in um, lowercase letters or you know if if, if it's uh, if, if it's uh, you know the beginning of a sentence, or whatever. Sometimes the, the first you know letter is capitalized, um, but but no other no other word should be all caps. And and so like you know there's some acronyms um, like PETA. Or something, or well, I don't know. No, no, there's some acronyms that actually make up a word. Um, now, national, whatever. So anyway, so like, but those have periods between them. So God is like should be the only like totally capitalized words with no period in between. <laughs> All the other words we use uh, should just uh, just. I mean, that that'd be a cool thing. I, um, anyway, all right. There's I have about a minute and a half left uh, in this episode, and I'm gonna go. I got to get some vegan cheese. I, I just, um, I'm going to start making vegan cheese because I just ordered the ingredients, um, tapioca and, and agar agar or something like whatever, you know, hopefully it will turn out. But, but I want to make some pizza tonight. So I'm going to, I'm going to head over to Whole Foods and, um, you know, get a, um, cause that's the only place they really have. I mean, they have a better price than a target for, for, for vegan cheese at Whole Foods. Couldn't believe it. So I'm going to do that, and yes, um, and God willing, because this is all up to God. Try, you know, believe me. Um, I'm going to like make a pizza later tonight. But I, you know, so all right. So anyway, I hope you're having a good day. Catch this every Monday through Friday. Channel 76 White Plains uh, Cable Access Optimum <laughs> five o'clock every day, and um, yeah, hope you're. Uh, so like, hopefully, you know, tomorrow. I'm feeling a little guilty about not having prepared enough. It's just because I had a meeting, right? You know, meeting before this. I should have taken some time. But tomorrow I'm going to try to like prepare more so I have this like topic, you know, because there's a lot of God stuff we just haven't covered. And and I'm going to like, you know, and not that we shouldn't, you know, again, cover the stuff we've covered um, before because, all right, thanks for watching and uh, God willing, see you tomorrow.